A very warm welcome to this video. My name is Sayyid Kasmi, and this is the part two of the lecture on asset based balance. Those of you guys who haven't watched my earlier lecture on the basic terminology and basic interpretation of um, asset based parameters, uh, you are advised to go back and watch that video. I would give uh, the link uh, right here, or I would also put the link of that initial lecture down in the uh, description box. So you do watch that one if you haven't watched that and then you come back to this uh, particular uh, video. Now this is uh, about uh, the interpretation of uh, base access and how we use the uh, values in the base access uh, to uh, determine what's going on in terms of asset base status of a child. Now just to as a quick review, I told you that in any asset based interpretation, we always start by looking at the pH, the normal pH is between 7.35 to 7.45. If it is below that, we call it acidemia. If it is beyond that, we call it alkalemia. So once you know that it's acidemia or alkalemia, then you look at the PCO2 levels. So if the PCO2 levels are up and down based on that, then you classify it. For example, if pH is down and PCO2 up, so if they are moving in opposite direction, then it's a respiratory problem. Um, if they are in the same direction, then you look at the bicarbonate level. So if the bicarbonate level is down along with a low pH that they are moving in the same direction, then it's a metabolic problem, irrespective of whether it's a metabolic acidosis or a metabolic alkalosis. And then we also discussed that uh, you once you have determined that the primary pro problem is a respiratory or a metabolic one, then you look at the compensation. And I gave you certain units as how do you uh, interpret that what would be the normal compensation in case of acidosis or alkalosis. Then we also talked about how to calculate the annoying gap and how to correct it for serum albumin levels. And last but not the least, we also talked about that in case if the annoying gap is high, we look at the uh, delta ratio and the delta gap. And if you don't know, delta gap is simply the change in annoying gap minus 12 divided by 24 minus the actual bicarbonate levels and its interpretation because uh, it helps you to determine if uh, it's a solitary high annoying gap metabolic acidosis or is there a combination of a high annoying gap metabolic acidosis with a non uh, annoying gap metabolic acidosis and sometimes you can have a triple problem as well where you can have a high annoying gap metabolic acidosis a non annoying gap metabolic acidosis and at the same time you can have a metabolic alkalosis at the same time so triple disorders it's very easy to pick them up if we know how to interpret the delta ratio or delta gap in uh, some instances now there's another parameter which um, is given on the asset base uh, result when you know when you get the results through the asset base uh, the uh, the asset base machine so that is known as base access so you would see that the base access is either given in a negative value or a positive value so base access can either be on the positive side or on the negative side, negative side, depending on whether there's a relative excess of base in the blood or a relative deficiency. In a very perfect condition, you could even get it as a zero. But the normal values, uh, they vary between plus 2.4 and minus 2.4. So any value that falls between plus 2.4 and minus 2.4, that would be taken as a normal base access, normal base access. If it is less than minus 2.4, let's say minus 2.5, 2.6, minus 3, minus 4, that would be taken as a negative, a negative base access, or we also call it as a base deficit in that particular case. If it is more than uh, uh, 2. Point, plus 2.4, in that case, we call it as a base access. So base access is more than plus 2.4, base deficit is less than minus 2.4, and within that is the normal values. But now the thing is that, does it make any sense? Where do we use the base access? Does it help us like, or is it just another reading on that particular slip? Well, it does help us in uh, interpreting acid base. And in this particular lecture, I'm gonna talk about how this base access can use. Sometimes you can get all the values to be normal. Then you can have a look at the base access because that can also tell you whether there is an acidosis or an alkalosis when you can't make anything out of the PCO2 or bicarbonate values if you can't make anything then you can look at the base access or the base deficit and you can uh, solve uh, that enigma so let's say uh, you come up in a condition which is known as low pH so you've got an acidotic state acidemia 
Now the next step is to look at PCO2. So you can have an increase in PCO2. You can have a normal PCO2. The normal PCO2 is between 4.5 and 6 kPa or 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. Or you can have a low one where it would be less than 35. So low means less than 35 or 4.5 kPa. And that would be greater than 45 or 6 kPa. And between that would be normal. So let's say you have got a low pH and a high PCO2. So they, they are going in the opposite direction. Respiratory problem. Now you look at the base axis. Now let's say the base axis is positive. Positive means it is greater than plus 2.4. It's more than that. Then what that does that mean? That means you have got a respiratory acidosis with metabolic compensation. So you've got a compensated respiratory acidosis. So the primary problem is respiratory, but it has been compensated. So without looking at the bicarbonate level, just at looking at the base axis, it can tell you that it's in a compensated respiratory acidosis. And where the compensation comes from? The compensation comes from the renal system. And obviously, when we talk about renal compensation, it takes a bit of time. So sometimes chronic uh, respiratory acidosis like happens in COPD or uh, chronic asthma, they can have like, you know, compensated states where you'll get a respiratory acidosis, but with metabolic compensation. So high PCO2 with a positive base axis means a compensated respiratory acidosis. Now, if you've got a high PCO2, but your base axis or deficit is normal, it's like somewhere between plus 2.4 to minus 2.4, you've got a primary respiratory acidosis, which is uncompensated. So usually happens in acute states, like somebody who's brought in with acute onset severe asthma and it's a history just for like two, three hours. So you will, and if, like, let's say there are severe obstruction, you'll get a high PCO2, but by that time, base access would be normal. It might get uh, more towards the positive side later on, but at that particular time, the history is short, you will get a normal base access or deficit. So that happens in primary respiratory acidosis, which is uncompensated. And if you get a low base uh, access, or in other words, a base deficit, that would be a base uh, deficit less than minus 2.4 so then you have got a dual disorder so you've got a respiratory acidosis and a metabolic acidosis so you've got two processes going at the same time so one is a respiratory acidosis so something is wrong with the lungs and something is wrong with the renal or with the other parts like gastrointestinal system or any of the part of the body which like constitute which becomes part of that metabolic system so you have got a dual disorder so this is a respiratory plus metabolic acidosis now with an acidotic state if you've got a normal pco2 so pco2 hasn't risen but like the po ph is not then you look at the base axis so if your base axis is going on the negative side base deficit is less than uh minus 2.4 then what you will get that is primarily a metabolic acidosis so that is a primary metabolic acidosis which is basically in an uh, uncompensated state because the pco2 hasn't gone down to compensate for it so that is a primary metabolic acidosis and with uh, a low P, uh, ph if you get a low pco2 that would be less than 35 or 4.5 kilopascal and the base access is negative again on the negative side less than minus 2.4 then it is basically a metabolic acidosis with respiratory compensation so here the respiratory system has compensated because the carbon dioxide levels have gone down but your base axis is still on the negative side so that combination fits well within what we call as primary metabolic acidosis with respiratory compensation so it's a compensated a metabolic acidosis which has been compensated by the respiratory system this is how we uh, interpret a low ph state and acidotic state along with CO2 and looking at the base excess or base deficit. So you should keep these things in mind. Now moving on, uh, looking at if the pH is high, alkalotic state. So if your pH is high, that means a pH greater than 7.45. Then again, you will look at the uh, PCO2 levels. So if the PCO2 level is high, they are in the same direction. Then you will be looking at the bicarbonate. So basically you are looking at a metabolic problem. So again, the third thing, if you don't look at the bicarbonate, but simply look at the base axis or deficit. So let's say there is a base axis of greater than plus 2.4. So let's say it is 3 or 4. That means it is basically a metabolic alkalosis 
with respiratory compensation. So you've got a high pH. So this is an alkalosis and uh, the uh, base excess is positive. So you've got more of the bicarbonates in the blood. So it is basically a primarily a metabolic uh, alkalosis and the PCO2 has increased. So it has increased as a buffer. So it means that the respiratory system has compensated for it. So you, that means metabolic alkalosis with respiratory compensation. If with a high pH, you've got a normal PCO2 and the base axis is positive, again, it's greater than plus 2.4, it could be 3, 4, anything. Then you've got an issue of primary metabolic alkalosis, which is uncompensated. And with a high pH, if you've got a low uh, bicarbonate again moving in the opposite direction you know the primarily the problem is respiratory again you look at the base axis or deficit so the base axis is greater than plus 2.4 you have got now a mixed respiratory plus metabolic alkalosis so again here you've got a dual problem so you've got an alkalosis which is being responsible partly by uh, derangement of the uh, metabolic system and as well derangement of the respiratory system as well so you've got a mixed disorder here if with a low PCO2, high pH, you've got a normal base deficit excess that is falling somewhere between plus 2.4 and minus 2.4, like it would be, uh, let's say, plus 2 or minus 1.5, you've got a primary respiratory alkalosis. You've got a primary respiratory alkalosis, which is basically an, in an uncompensated, in an acute one. And if it is negative, the base axis is negative, let's say minus 3, minus 4, minus 4.5, then you are looking at primarily a respiratory alkalosis state with metabolic compensation. So here you've got a respiratory alkalosis which has been compensated by the metabolic system. So in other words, you can use the base axis to determine whether somebody has got a respiratory problem or a metabolic problem in terms of acidosis or alkalosis. Number two, it also tells you about the compensation, whether it's an acute uncompensated state or whether it's a subacute or a chronic compensated state of that acidosis or alkalosis, whether it be respiratory or metabolic. And the third thing, it's also good in picking up dual disorders when there is a combination of uh, metabolic and respiratory acidosis or alkalosis. So remember, the normal values for base axis or deficit is between plus 2.4 to minus 2.4. Some books that take it as plus 2.2 to minus 2.2. Some even take up as to plus 2 and minus 2. Doesn't matter. Whatever your reference values are there given on the machine that you are using, you just follow that. But the principles are the same. So I hope you have understood how to use base access along with pH and PCO2 levels to make a diagnosis of acid-base disturbance. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and share my videos with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed it, uh, a subscribe would be fantastic. And if you still have got any questions, uh, you can put it down in the comment section below and uh, I will try my level best to answer your queries and your questions. Have a very good day. Bye bye. I'm signing off.